Hi, hello, and welcome to another video. It is a, another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, but pedestrian. And this week's category was Drag Race Fashion Week. So today we are going to do the opposite of Fashion Week is normal people like you and me. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take you through my skin prep today because it's important. Starting with the Kosas Serum Spray. Just going to give this a shake a -roo. All right, this week the girls had to do the design challenge and they were broken up into three houses, the House of Visage, the House of Carson, and the House of Ross. And each had their own theme. Of course, Michelle was Jersey Girl style, Carson's C Carson Cressley's Country Club Ranch kind of vibes and Ross's was Palm Springs. I'm so, pop on some Holy Hydration Eye Cream from Elf real quick. The house that I would have wanted probably would have been the House of Ross, just because I like beachy vibes and bright colors. I like animal print, but not all over my body. I think of it as like an accent. Could not do the House of Carson, because if I wear plaid, I immediately look like I'm in my homeland of Scotland. <laughs> To moisturize, I'm taking the Naturium Multipeptide Moisturizer. I'm going to take three pumps of that, and I'm also going to add in some Say Glowy Super Gel. Three pumps of that, so half and half. So we didn't get to see much of the struggles that the girls were going through in designing because the episodes were are cut short and we also had the reading challenge this episode, which also felt like a snap and it was over with. We got to see one read from each queen, except for I think Sasha maybe had two, Lucy had three. So it was like, okay, well clearly she's going to win because airtime, right? <laughs> I liked Lux's read on Marsha, Marsha, Marsha when she said all her looks are from Marshalls, Marshalls, Marshalls. I mean, really, she made it too easy. That one was perfect. So I have a nice dewy base, but it's not overwhelmingly shiny or anything like that. Looks nice and fresh. I definitely was thoroughly entertained by Lucy. Her jokes were <laughs> a little irreverent, but also hilarious. Rue was going around the workroom. She briefly touched with the queens in the groups, which were pre-selected, which is always an interesting move from the producers. And basically only two of them didn't know how to sew. Malaysia being one of them and Amethyst being the other. And Spice also expressed that they didn't know how to sew. I guess that makes that three, right? Math. For my base, I'm taking the Diffusion Dew from Make Beauty. We saw snippets of the queen saying, do you think this looks right? Should I change it? But it's definitely not like in past seasons where they really highlighted like <laughs> troubles with the sewing machine or other queens stepping in to help so it just it really did feel like you have a design challenge we're gonna talk to you about who and who can't sew we're not gonna show you any of the issues that they go through or how fast you can create a look straight to the runway and I think that's because of the way they designed the challenge the groups were all in their own fashion houses so they walk individually and then they go around and clap like models do all down the runway. So the goal was for your look to be unique but also fit within your fashion house. I think all of the groups were pretty successful at having their looks be very cohesive. I would say the House of Visage, in my opinion, was the least cohesive and that's because of Amethyst and Spice going to take the new Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. Spices look like it was literally held on by those little threads and Amethyst talked in a Roscoe's after party about how her dress was literally held together by safety pins and that's why she decided to add the gray shawl in the look because she was trying to hide them. <laughs> Malaysia got a lot of hoopla for how well she did for not having ever you know, sewn a complete garment. She did take sewing classes beforehand, but I also recognize she had a giant cape on, so we don't we don't know what was underneath that cape. Could have been a whole plethora of mistakes. It could have been bareback for all we know. My favorite looks were 
mistress. Mistress, mistress's outfit fit her like a glove. It looked absolutely amazing. And Lux Noir London. Hers was oh, absolutely stunning as well. I mean, the fact that she got the zebra print on her pants lined up perfectly was just like, what did you other girls do? <laughs> did y'all have the same amount of time? Because it doesn't look like it, you know? I'm going to take the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. I think Aura, once again, dodged the bottom, too. I thought they were a little too harsh on Jax. Her outfit was so much more technically challenging than spices. It almost feels like they are just having to give some of these other girls screen time because there's so many girls and we only have an hour. If we had that extra 30 minutes, everybody could at least get a confessional in here and there, but that's not happening. And we haven't really seen much of Jax. We haven't seen much of Malaysia. And we haven't seen much of Robin. I feel like Robin did a really good job this week as well. Every time she steps out on the runway, I'm just like, <gasps> she's so gorgeous. Speaking of gorgeous, that bronzer is giving me a nice sheeny sheen. This is the Lip and Blush Glazed Keychain. Keychain stain, and this is cute. Keychain, and this is like squishy gummy. I got the shade Squeezed Java. Mm -hmm. Take, I just want nice and juicy cheeks. I'm going to add a little bit more. Amethyst found herself in the bottom two again and just the look on her face is utter defeat. You know, I feel like she kind of gave up a little bit and knew that it was her time to go because I just didn't see the fire and I actually really loved a bang and a dark high pony on her and her makeup looked really good so her face was the best I've ever seen it but sad to see her go there definitely could have been other people in the bottom too but I think she still would have been there for sure I'm gonna use my Westman Atelier pink bubble powder to set my under eyes because I have another powder that I want to try all over the rest of the face set my nose cracks too Janelle Monet was the guest judge, and I cannot fully comprehend her beauty. She is one of the most beautiful <laughs> people that I've ever seen. I first was made aware of her because um, I watched Glass Onion on Netflix, and she's an amazing actress, and I didn't even know she was the singer too, so I'm a fake fan, but wow. And the bright red lip with her black and white outfit, and golly. She's immaculate. And then the advice she gave in Untucked. <laughs> the queens were joking about how they were just like on the edge of their seat lingering on every word she was saying and they could listen to her talk for hours and hours. And I was like, oh, I was like, man, I'm leaned in too. I could totally see listening to her forever. Just, just forever, you know. I'm gonna set the rest of the face with the One Powder Wonder Perfecting Powder dun, 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 from Beauty Pie. And this is like supposed to be like a universal finishing powder. Gives you some glow. I'm gonna set everything because everything is glowy and dewy. So that powder looks really nice. I'm gonna add more glow. Basically my idea of a pedestrian fashion week is like just a person who has really beautiful glowy skin. They look like they drink a gallon of water a day. They look like they don't have to set a reminder on their phone to take their vitamins. You know, that's the vibe I'm going for today. And I could have easily done this without foundation and powder, but I like playing with makeup. <laughs> so I'm going to play with makeup. Next, I'm taking the Bouncy Blendable Highlighter from Kaja in the shade Toy Alien. And you can't tell me that these are not modeled after one another. This came first. This is the Kaja highlighter. This is the new one from Rare Beauty. 2.8 grams, 4.5 grams. And the kicker of it all, I just looked. The Rare Beauty one has 2.8 grams. The one from Kaja Beauty has 4.5 grams. All tea, all shade. Pink lemonade. Going to take this on the high points of my face. So to prepare for this video, I did look up some images from New York Fashion Week and Paris Fashion Week and read some articles about 2023 
makeup trends. And the Fashion Week trends were glowy, juicy skin, grunge makeup, jewels on the face, bold pops of color, also color on the inner corner, sharp kind of harsh liner, patent leather type of lip. So those were the forecasts for makeup according to the fashion world. Today I'm going to do a little dusting of color in the inner corner. That's one of my favorite ways to wear color but also have it not be so overwhelming on the face. One of the main colors that I saw on display was a chartreuse greeny yellowy color. So I'm going to use this matte fluid paint from About Face in the shade Vertigo Flowers. Scrape it off on a palette here. Dip that onto a fluffy brush and then work it into my hand. I want a sheer wash to begin with. Of course, you don't have to go super bold like boom green the first time you try a pop of color on your inner corner a powder blue looks so good so i'm just going to flip this brush over because it is dual ended and with the clean side just going to clean up around the edges you can also take your concealer brush and bring it right up around those edges. Or if you feel like you got it somewhere you don't want it. And that's a super easy eye look that took you like 0.25 seconds to do and you look bold and cool. What I'm also gonna do is go back into my highlighter and sweep some of that highlighter right here above the color and then underneath the brow as well. Feel free to let me know who your favorites are, how you feel about the season so far. There's quite a bit of hostility around the Queen's Instagrams. Their Instagrams are getting flagged and turned off and whatever, whatever, because people are, the fans are going crazy. Mistress has had her account blocked or deactivated, whatever Instagram does twice because fans keep reporting her account because they don't like something that she said on Drag Race. I love Mistress. I don't think she's being overtly rude. I think she's being a drag queen and telling her castmates how it is. But the kicker of it is that was filmed quite some time ago. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha went online and made a video it was like, y'all stop harassing her. We are fine. We are friends. That was a year ago. We're adults. We've moved on. You should too, kind of deal. That was the NYX Stick It Stick It in the shade Rich Auburn. And I'm going to fill in the rest of the way with the Lift and Snatch brow pin from NYX in Blonde. I absolutely love this brow combo so much. I know 90s thin brows, they've been coming back for a while now, but I will not participate. I refuse. I like my brows to look natural. They are fluffed up, but they're not like plastered to my face. My thoughts are all over the place today, but I am now taking the Tude Mascara. Okay, if you can see that my lashes are a little bit white, it's because I did prime them with the Beauty Pie eyeshadow primer. I'm hoping it is a dupe for the Urban Decay primer potion. That's what I slather on my lashes before I use mascara. Not all the time, but when I do, I will definitely let you know, and I did today. I felt like Lucy did a really good job sewing those pants and had Lux not also sewn an amazing pair of pants, she probably would have been, she probably would have stood out a little more. She would have been better served with a solid color blazer instead of kind of mixing and matching the print like she chose to do. That primer is doing wonderful things, holding my lashes straight up to the sky. Yeah! Of course, they loved Sasha. Sasha could walk out in a brown paper bag and we would all call it fashion. She's just a stunning human. And she can get away with doing a bathing suit. Even though Michelle has like gone on to people in the past about wearing a bathing suit. It fit the theme. 
and she lined that flamingo little cape thing she had going on so it did look more detailed and finished than some other ones like amethyst and i really did not like auras i was listening to sibling rivalry sibling rivalry it is bob the drag queen and monet exchanges podcast and uh, Naomi Smalls was uh, filling in for Bob. They said that auras looked like a loincloth and that is exactly what it looked like. I'm going to take the Milani highly rated mascara on my bottom lashes. All right suddenly that pop of green doesn't look quite as crazy now that I have mascara on. Next I'm taking one of my all-time favorite lip liners. The Makeup by Mario lip liner in the shade Hue. I love this lip liner because it is so close to my natural lip color. I'm going to use the About Face Cherry Pick Lip Butter in the shade Guava Crush. It smells amazing. Fruity goodness. I feel like I need more blush. I'm going to add some of that same color onto the center of my lip too. Adds the cheek color in. And this is the final look. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode. And also let me know if you would wear a look like this. Still soft and fresh, but a bold pop of color. It's called Fashion Darling. <laughs> Don't forget to check me out over here on Instagram and TikTok for more content. As always, be blessed and be kind. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like, a comment, a subscribe all the YouTube things. If you recreate this look, please tag me over on Instagram so I can see. And that's it for today, and we will talk again soon. Bye!